thank you for coming here to see me. The reason why I'm here is because I would like to share my thoughts about data, ethics, and privacy, which I have a very strong interest on. Um, you might be wondering how I got here. Well, it's been a while since I've been hearing about invasions of privacy and how our information is being collected without giving any consent. Based on the information collected, unknown entities can predict your behavior, um, influence your decisions, and your digital biography can play against you in the future. And by the end of this, I hope you will understand what I mean. So I'm going to explain what data brokers are. They are entities that collect information about consumers and then sell the data to other data brokers, advertisers, or companies. These data brokers do not have a direct relationship with the people they are collecting the data on, so most of the people aren't even aware that their information is actually being collected. Um, it's difficult to tell who these data brokers are <coughs> and what information they are collecting from us. <coughs> and these data brokers are operating in a multi-billion dollar invisible industry. Um, so data brokers are collecting information from email addresses, interests, offline activity, to assist in marketing all of these individuals. They also collect information from public records, such as property records and driver's license, census <coughs> data, such as birth certificates, um, they also divorce records. They also collect information from browsing activity and social media sources. They even buy information from commercial sources and retailers from individuals purchases information, such as dates, dollars amounts, and payment of method used. And of course, they also exchange information and buy information from one another, and then merge this data with their own records. What many people don't realize is that several small pieces of this information can put in together and reveal so much more about you than you would think that is even possible. Um, our mobile phones are also a huge collector of our personal information and tracks your routine as we are constantly carrying it with us. It can indicate things that we are doing and reveal information about oneself, like what your behavior and patterns are, and traces your daily life, such as when you are going to bed, when you are going out for dinner, when you are traveling, or who are you talking to. Also because sometimes we're agreeing to do so. So we accept very long, complicated terms and conditions that grant our permissions to apps to collect our messages, locations, photos, and searches. Using this information, they can find out a lot about yourself. In October of 2018, the University of Oxford surveyed 959 applications in the United States and concluded that 40 to 90% of all such apps had like third party tracking companies. Um, often regardless of whether the application, the app user, had an account created with those applications or not. But sometimes they also collect information even if we haven't given permission to do so. For instance, a good weather app was sharing, sharing the user's location with a third party called Reveal Mobile, even if the user had the location sharing <coughs> disabled. Um, web browsing history. So there is companies that we are perhaps not surprised that they are collecting our data from. So for example, you know when you're visiting the web, the news website, or when you're doing some online shopping with Amazon, um, but then when you browse through the web, read about the news, or do some online shopping, there are third-party cookies 
that they are collecting your click stream as you click from side to side to see what you might be reading, what you might be interested in, and what types of things you might buy. These third party cookies aren't often visible for the user, and they are collecting and selling the present history to these people. They can obviously pose a considerable risk of invasions of privacy, and we search for very personal things on the internet that we are not comfortable to share with others, or we don't want others to find out. Loyalty programs such as frequent flyers and reward card incentives in the supermarkets are also selling insights from customers to other third parties without consent or knowledge from the consumer. These loyalty rewards programs are not providing any transparency and again, we don't know what they are doing with this information and who these unknown companies are. According to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, these rewards programs generate between 110 million to 370 million Australian dollars in earnings each year. And nine in 10 adults are members of these loyalty schemes. As you can see, there is so much, so much money that it can be made from this data. So what's happening with this data they are collecting from us? Well, data brokers typically place consumers into categories based on their age, ethnicity, education level, or income. They also monitor social media sources and can determine like your political affiliation, your sexual orientation, religion, and other interests. So profiles are created and categorized on the basis of the demographics and digital behavior. Perhaps a most well-known case of this is the Cambridge Analytical scandal and their involvement in the 2016 US election. Cambridge Analytica harvested the personal data of millions of people's Facebook profiles without their consent and used it for political advertising purposes. They supposedly use a technique called psychographics, which involves in building a digital psychological profile that will allow the campaign to predict exactly what kind of appeal will be most likely to convince a particular voter. Um, the information can also be used to pull people in high-risk classifications based on their search history or to offer a different price for the insurance quote. So for example, searching for medical conditions such as heart disease or diabetes could be added to your digital biography. Even seemingly innocuous information, such as looking for motorcycles or diabetes for oneself or a friend, might mean that insurance companies could consider you more likely to engage in a risky behavior. In some cases, these classifications might be based in inaccurate information, and there is not an easy way to access to that information, to correct it, or to even remove it. There is also predictive analytics and algorithms. If you take the financial industry, for example, Facebook just released an algorithm that is able to give you some credit rating. So basically, Facebook will be able to predict if you're gonna pay your loan or not. And credit rating is totally predictable by your personal information. And if you end up with a bad credit rating, you will have a lot of limitations in the future. So why do I care so much about how my data is being collected? Well, it can obviously play against me in the future, but it's also because of privacy. Privacy is a fundamental human right that is being taken away from us. And with the rise of new technologies such as artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things, we have to be re extremely careful. Privacy means any of our personal information, 
such as your behavior, financial, medical, and this is being captured without even knowing. You need to ensure that your information is kept private to avoid unfortunate common threats, such as identity theft, manipulation through advertisements, discrimination based on your personal information, and other many real harms that can arise from invasions of privacy. Take, for example, Equifax in 2017. Equifax collects information about your credit history, such as how many credit cards you have, how much money you owe, or how you pay your bills. And based on that, it creates a credit report about you and then sells these reports, these reports to businesses to decide whether they're going to give you credit or not. You are not able to opt out of this data collection. And all this information was exposed by a data breach that affected to 147 million of people in 2017. So there is certainly a lack of knowledge and understanding by these organizations with respect to privacy, which has led to unethical practices. There is also a lack of understanding amongst the people, the users of these services. We need to protect and understand our information to minimize the abuse of our information being used by third parties and we have to protect our privacy and fight against information malpractice. So I strongly believe that understanding about data and privacy is very important to protect our digital biography. With the rise of artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things, we need to build awareness in order to limit the amount of information that we're giving away and to minimize the impact that will have on us in the future. Thank you.